Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 21 of Bumbling Through Birthright, the Dungeons and Dragons campaign that we're playing through where we're balancing a fine line of we really want peace but we also really want to go to war. If this is your first time here, make sure you check out the playlist and if you're just not caught up on the last episode, make sure you check out the link down below for that. end of the last session we had just finished clearing out the Ryuvin embassy which was a leftover from the war. It was booby trapped, it was terrible, there were spies, but we didn't die. We did however get a little bit injured so we decided that at the start of the session we should probably take a long rest. For this session we had four player characters. We had Roz, we had Brindis, we had Renalfer, and we had Val. So as Renalfer tends to do on long rest, he spent the time gambling. Brindis spent a little more time working on her gun proficiency because she did pick up a musket recently and she's actually been critting like crazy with that. Like straight up the player will go like, I'm gonna crit and crit, boom. Um, so it would be so much better if there was proficiency involved. Roz decided to spend the week working. She went to the local alchemist and kind of helped categorize various different things because yeah, that's work for Roz, but also Roz finds it super interesting because she is such a nerd. And then Val went off working on her actual job, which is bounty hunting, so she did some bounty hunting. Next, we avoided it for quite a while, but we have petitioners. And I mean, in all fairness, we have just moved the court from Alevica for the summer court to Hollingholman for the winter court, so it makes sense that we would have petitioners here. The first thing we have to deal with is a dove from Doson. So let's just look at the map here. So if you remember, this is us here, and this is Dosan right here. So we're planning on having a summit with all the people from the Highlands in it because we want a united Highlands. That is Brindis's goal. And she decided to invite the Empress from Dosan as well. And so the letter is basically saying, are you sure you meant to send this to me or did you mean to send it to someone else? And Brenda sends a letter back saying, yes, absolutely, we would like to have you there if you'd be willing to come. Next, Van Hender shows up and if you remember from quite a while back, he is a witch hunter that came to the country and was like, I heard you might have witches here. And Brenda, the witch, sitting on the throne goes, oh, really? That's nice. Very interesting. And he asked if he could stay and hunt for witches in the country and she was like, yeah, sure, go ahead, which is super hilarious. <laughs> right in front of you buddy you're a terrible witch hunter so he actually has a woman with him bound and gagged and says this is a witch i've caught her doing terrible things i would like to burn her at the stake and if you let me burn her at the stake we're cool i will leave brindis is not really down with that so she's like you know what instead of burning her at the stake i'm gonna make her your thrall so now you have to deal with her and take care of her ben hender was not happy also i mean I didn't want to burn her at the stake, but if you figure out a way to make it look like she burned at the stake, Van Hender would leave Brindis and there wouldn't be a problem anymore. After we deal with the petitioners, we go to the Hero's Flagon, which is like a pub, and we find Killian, who's the head of the knights. And a couple sessions ago, he was talking about this cool elk that he had heard of with like silver antlers and how he wanted to go hunt it. And we we're like, you really shouldn't go hunt that, but we never really explained why he shouldn't go hunt it. And that being the fact that it's a talking elk, so he found this elk and then the elk was talking and so he didn't kill him and then he was kind of mad that, you know, we hadn't told him that it was a talking elk. It just slipped our mind, I guess. But Brindis was like, you know, you've been, you showed a lot of humility by not killing that. And you know, you've been doing great things, so here's the lordship. That is the best way to get out of everything. Just make someone a lord or a lady, give them the title, they won't be mad anymore. While we're there, we hear another table and they're talking about how winter is coming in and how there's bound to be an uptick in attacks by the ice fiend. And it's basically an onche made of ice and stuff that has just been terrorizing people on the road to yang capping. So it's probably something we're gonna have to deal with at some point, but you know, our docket is pretty full, so we've got other stuff that we need to deal with right now. So, little ice fiend, your problem, but step to the left. Instead, we are going off to the little shipyard slash temple area that both Val and Renalfer have been investing in. I'm not exactly sure where it is. Um, I think it's somewhere down here. It's in Hollingvik, so I think it's like somewhere right almost on the border with Ryuvik. And so 
If you remember last session, Val tried to level up her holding to a level two, it didn't work. So basically we're gonna go there and see if we can figure out why it didn't work. We get there, there's a bunch of snow obviously because winter is coming, but there are a ton of barricades around where the shipyard is. There's tents outside of it, like workers who came to work on the shipyard, but they 100% can't get in for some reason. So we decide to go to the temple, and we get to the temple, and then the priests come in after, and Renolfer's like, hey, what's going on? This is my temple, what the heck is going on there? And they like plague doctor masks on. And it turns out that there has been a plague outbreak where the shipyard is. And then they talk about this guy, this plague doctor mask, and his name is Nolan Terrell. And if you remember at the, I think, beginning of the last session or the end of the one before when we found out that the five guys that we had sent to watch Nolan Terrell had turned up dead. So here's this guy here, probably causing problems. <sighs> so we decide that we should go confront him in this plague area. Great idea, I know. But the temple does have a couple of s more doctor's plague suits and so we get in them and we go in there and sure enough we find him there and he's muttering to himself and he's checking off notes and talking about Dwale and we start to talk to him and about this time Roz realizes that he's trying to make a string of the plague that is resistant to the Dwale because the Dwale is the only thing right now that is soothing symptoms and she also thinks that there's a very good chance that he's the one that created the plague that we're dealing with that the Dwale does help. So that's not good, <laughs> naturally. And we decide that we need to kill him and so we do. Val manages to use a frostbreaker to slice off his head, which was super convenient um, because she got a crit. And so we just kind of throw his body on a funeral pyre and burn it and kind of hope for the best in there. Roz takes all his notes to see if there's any way that Roz can figure out a way to concoct an antidote for this strain of the plague. But it seems like he's using his own weird poisons in his body to make this plague, so kind of be hard to counteract that. Well, the next day before we leave the settlement, the body goes missing. I think there's a good chance he's still alive, and um, we probably didn't kill him the right way. But that's something to deal with another time, probably, most likely. Things like this do tend to come back to bite us in the butt. So from there we decide to go up to Viborg because we do want to meet with the guys from the Blood Skull Barony. As we're going along the way, Renolfer gets stuck in some quicksand but fortunately does not die because that would suck. And we travel for another six days and that was really the only major complication we had which, all things considered, not so bad. So once we get to Viborg, we go up to the keep where Asa is. She is, was I guess, a former bounty hunter who was Val's nemesis but now they get along fine and she's actually running Viborg. She's cleaning it up. She's got people strung up in the gallows everywhere and we're like are you sure you still need to have them there? And we actually do convince her in the end of the day that maybe she's made enough of her point and she can take those bodies away. She does tell us however that her biggest problem is there's two corrupt families that are just kind of duking it out and she's waiting for one of them to slip up enough that she can kill them. But that other than that, overall her cleaning up the city is going pretty well. So we spend the day there and then the next day it's kind of raining a bit but we head out to where Kalian is set up with the knights. He's like at this side of the field and then the other side of the field that's where the orogs are. We get Kalian and the knights to set up a tent in between and we go to the middle to meet with whoever they send to meet with us. So for this we're gonna go back to the map and we're gonna maybe zoom in a bit this time. So basically they want this little bump here, um, oh, that way, uh, at the top of Ryuvik, which used to be their territory. They want that so that they can farm because the Blood Skull Barony is mostly forest. So they want some fertile land to farm in. We think about it for a while, we talk, but they say if we give them this then peace. Peace is great. And so we say yes, but with some concessions. So basically, any time during the year, I think we decide on once a season, we can come and we can inspect that area to make sure that you're not just building up an army to kill us and you're actually farming like you said you were. They agree, they're like, you know what? Okay, we can make that concession. 
we plan on sending the Orogs that defect it to our country there with a guard, of course, so that they don't just get stabbed when they walk in. But we're good, and we'll see what that leads to. But again, if it does lead to war, at least our people won't be mad because we did try. When we get back to Viborg, there's a reporter there waiting for us. Her name is Meg Solveig, and she wants the scoop. Are we going to war with the Orogs? So Roz suddenly became elected, like the person, the press correspondents or whatever, to talk to the reporter and just like so much sidestepping and political language but managed to get out of that interview with hopefully not causing any problems. Also Roz managed to plug Dantier Island and Rainier's lodge on it because she asked what we were doing there and were we there with the Siren's permission and blah 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 she just wouldn't stop. But overall like I said I think it went pretty well. But again, like I said, we are busy. We don't have time to deal with ice fiends because we have so many other things to deal with. Brindis has tried to rule the province of Sarkol, which is in the north of Ryuvik, which is very close to where that bump is that we just decided to cede to the Orogs. But every time she's tried to rule it, there has been a problem. There were Orogs coming in and stealing people and money once, and so we need to figure out what the problem is this time. So on our way up to Sarkol, we stop at Hyarsmark and in this town of Oddsfell, and it is like a brick producing town. So there are bricks everywhere. We go into the inn and there are people there, they are exhausted, they're covered in mud, and they're complaining about how much they're getting taxed. But it's weird because Brindis hasn't been able to collect taxes from here. And so we need to go to the Jarl and see what the heck is going on. And he is basically living in the lap of luxury with gold bars everywhere. He's the reason that taxes aren't getting sent to us. He's making everybody work twice as hard to make a ton of money and then taxing them like crazy for it. So he's like, well, oh, it just, I forgot to send it. So he tries to just give us a gold bar, but Brindis is not having that. So we depose him and decide that he's going to have to work in these brick factories, which is probably not going to be a good situation for him because everybody hates him. And we basically go outside and just yell for a brick foreman and the first brick foreman that shows up, we're like, all right, you're in charge now. These great decisions we're making. And then instead of collecting the taxes, we decide to leave the taxes with him to be like, you need to build a public bath because everybody here is disgusting, <laughs> which I'm sure they like to hear, but whatever. So we continue on our way. We get to Fulkheim City, which is like the only real city in Sarkol. And we go see Jarl Nyral and she has a raven that has been forwarded from Halder because he had got a raven at the castle. And this message is from the Scourge of Thursden saying, congratulations on beating me. He's Nolan Terrell. Also, please come visit me in my tower whenever you want. Which, I mean, we're probably not gonna do for a while because he probably would kill us. I think we got really lucky that Val was able to cut off his head in that situation and obviously it didn't have the full effect. We should probably do some research on how to actually kill him. But that was the end of that session. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a busy session, uh, just like the one before. If you have missed any of them, make sure you check out the playlist and also make sure that you like this video and subscribe so you will know when the next one comes out. And I will see you then.